Do we all agree that Tom's plan was to buy Ariane out with whatever money he invented in his mind, which also, how was he going to get that money? Buy Ariane out. And then when Rachel got done with treatment, she would move in and they would live there together. And maybe Rachel would help with whatever bills she could. But since Tom has been paying the bills, this whole all the bills this whole time, like, you know, I mean, I can do it just. But that doesn't that feel like that was the plan to just kick Ariana out and move in Rachel, knowing that this home was Ariana's dream, too, like he knew this was her. Dr- she said, I want the house more than I want marriage, more than I want babies. Like a house is my goal. And he, after having this affair, was gonna, I swear to God, I've seen this theory and I already was like hypothesizing that as well. So I'm thinking it's just, it just, what else was his plan? Because he thought he was gonna, he's so heartbroken. He thought he was gonna stay with Rachel, which is so ironic, by the way. Hold on. But. <laughs> He thought he was going to stay with Rachel, but there he is inviting chicks over to his pool parties and whatnot. And he's like all heartbroken at her being like, we were never in love, whatever. He's such a joke. Oh, my God. But so like he thought he was going to just move Rachel in and live happily ever after. Remember, he told James that he uh, wanted to raise his kids in the backyard. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, that's sick. It's sick. The man is sick. Okay. He's a joke. Even Jax Taylor in the freaking after show is like, uh, what? And that's a bad sign. Also, it's funny, too, because then Jax will say something so ridiculous and then Tom will give him the same look. Just okay. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Okay, but seriously, that was his plan. And he is sick. And then he has the nerve to say, well, my financial situation changed because she took so long to get back to me. Well, sir, how long do you you expect to be able to pay the bills? Because it's got to be longer than two months. What financials? And if your financial situation has changed in two months, then you were never in a position to buy her out and take over the mortgage and all that shit. Because you know he would have just left Ariana on the HELOC, on the mortgage, and been like, okay, Ariana, okay, whatever. Like, I'm not going to default. Why do you want to be off of that? Ugh. But then when he saw that counteroffer, he was like, oh, yeah, okay, I guess I get why she wouldn't want to be on the mortgage. But then I have to refinance. Ugh. And it's going to be a bitch to refinance that dude because he's got the HELOC on the house. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, that's going to be. He's not doing math at all in his head because the HELOC alone to get up. Okay, yeah, he's like not even going to get that much money from his from selling the oh god sell the house you idiot um okay but now we get it now we get what tom's fucking plan was that's why he's he he was just like big deal like sure it was bad i had this affair i'm like we already had sex in the house when you were sleeping how bad can it be if i just move her in here i already have the house i use it i love when he said that i use it of course you do it's a house oh he's such an evil asshole anyway For those that are watching this and not just listening, the setup is brand new. It is still a work in progress. Uh, As a lot of you know, I was living with my dad. I had my dad here in this place with me, and that was one of the toughest, most challenging, most triggering, most disappointing, most everything experiences I've had to go through in my adult years. Uh, But I was able to find a place. My sister actually was the one who found this place. We found a place for him. We moved him out into that place. So now I'm here all by myself in a two-bed, two-bath. I feel like a rich bitch, okay? Two-bed, two-bath in Sherman Oaks. That's right, okay? I made it. Um, Goals. But um, I have this new... I have this whole room to make my little recording space, but it takes a minute because, like, I don't have to get I have to get soundproof panels up and I have to get a blackout curtain for here and be me a sign here. I'm not really sure, but it's coming along, and I'm very grateful. And I also want to say a big thank you to you guys for being so understanding of me taking that week off. 
because I I was not by any means like in a full breakdown or anything. I actually was just doing it to get ahead of that happening. There was a lot of emotion just being stifled while I was living with my dad. Uh, my therapist at at the time, I've stopped seeing her, not for anything bad, just honestly, because there was no point. Because every time I had a session, it was just about my dad. And the boundary that she wanted me to put up with put up with him was not living with him. But I couldn't do that until the lease was up. So I was just stifling and compartmentalizing so many things. And once I was able to get him out and access those feelings, I was like, oh, shit, this is going to be this is going to be a lot to process. So I'm grateful that pretty much everybody was understanding of the break and not even just didn't even ask a question. I don't think I've ever just been like, guys, I'm taking a mental health week. I just have to. I maybe maybe one time before. Um, but yeah, this one was was not I wasn't expecting to. And then as the process happened, I was like, oh, okay. Lots going on, lots happening inside of me here. But anyway, FYI, always make sure to check the YouTube community tab or Instagram. Um, because I do announce like if I'm taking breaks and if I'm taking, if I'm going to be delayed or whatever, I always announce on YouTube in the community tab. Um, I need to, I guess, figure out a way. And I announce it on the Patreon, but I don't know how else to like communicate with everyone who listens other than putting it on the YouTube channel and then, um, on Instagram, like in my stories or something. I, maybe I need another avenue. Should I do like an email list? Oh God, that sounds like a pain in the ass. Who wants that? Right. Who wants more emails? Unless you do, in which case, I guess I can figure that out. Maybe I'll have Cloud 10 help me. Anyway, I'm rambling. I haven't talked to you guys in so long, so I'm just chalking up a storm. Anyways, um, the one downside to having this new space to record in is the cats. They are yet to understand that this is also their space to hang out. And the cats are really the whole point of this, right? They're the whole point of the bed recording. So I'm going to probably just have to, like, chill on this bed and, like, watch tv or something in here so that they're like okay we hang out in here because honestly that's the whole point is having tiger and penny so i'm working on it i promise lots of changes happening around here um i know i already talked about this on my patreon but for those that are curious the lips have settled so nice i will absolutely maintain these at all times i love them. They, I definitely was like, oh shit, I made a mistake. I was like, oh shit, I made a mistake about the filler in my cheek and the ocular and and cheek filler and the lips. Cause I was like, oh God, I look like, I look like those people, but your face just is swollen. And then now that everything's settled, I'm like, okay, yes, very expensive. No wonder people do this, um, when they get on TV, but I also can see how you could start to obsess and be like, "Mm, just a little bit more right there. Because it is, it's like a magic trick. When you see it settle, you're like, well, that's amazing. Now, how'd they do that? And so I could see you getting a little addicted. Like, what if I just put a little more here, a little more here? Um, I promise I won't, though, because I know better. I would, I talk shit about people who do it. I better not do it to myself. Oh, God, cut to me. No, I won't. I won't. And I have such a good, my doctor that I go to, Dr. Jessica, She's clearly, she knows what she's doing. She knows how to stay. If she were to tell me, like, we could afford to do just a little more on this side to even it out or whatever, I'd be like, okay, I believe you. But I don't think she'd ever let me go too far. Which is also why, never mind, I'm I'm ranting. Anyway, love my lips. Love my lips. We have a lot to get into. Let's just fucking get into it, right? Okay. Okay, on Vanderpump. So let's talk a little bit, a little bit about last week. The big points were Joe and Lala going to get hot, a hot dog, not a fucking cheese dog with this bitch. That's how Lauren, Lauren from Utah keeps pitching it. Like, it doesn't matter where you went. You mic'd up and you sat for lunch with Joe to talk about her side of things, and. Katie is supposed to be like a really good friend. I mean, would you want Katie to go hang out with one of the chicks Randall was hooking up with? You know, I don't I just I don't get 
what Lala's doing other than just simply being a producer plant. I said this early on in like the first couple episodes that Schwartz was like their little darling, the producer's little darling. Schwartz was the guy willing to do it all. And I think I even said that Schwartz looked like he couldn't handle it. And I made a joke that it if, if it gets to be too much for Schwartz, you're going to hear him be like, pineapple, banana, like safe word, get me out of here, abort. Because he was going in like, guys, I feel like we should invite Tom and then just getting attacked by everyone. So, But Schwartz was clearly like the producer's favorite at that point because they were, you know, begging people to film with Tom Sandoval and Schwartz was the only one willing to do it. Then Lala came around and now Lala and Schwartz are like buddy-buddy more than they've ever really been. And it feels like it's because they're like, mm, we get it. This is just, let's let's help out production because they've got a job to do and we just need to kind of make it happen. And so it just feels like Lala has zero integrity right now other than keeping her job. And I, I mean... I guess I don't, I can't hate her for that. It just says a lot about her. I guess that's what it is. I can't hate her for it, but it just says something about her character. That's what it is. It's like, yeah, okay, I guess that's cool, but also like gross. You know, that's who you are. Okay, I guess that's just kind of, kind of, kind of yucky about you. And so I think that's sort of what this season is proving. And also that now Lala wants these other kids. So she's she's like, oh, mama needs this money. I will do whatever it takes. And kind of like Ariana should understand that. And this is where I think I like Katie and Ariana's approach to the show more so than maybe a Sheena or now a Lala. Katie had said she on her, I think she was doing her podcast and she said something she was referring to something. And she said um, it was that season. And then she's like, oh, I don't like referring to my life in seasons like that because it is just my life. That was telling to me that she doesn't think of her her life just off the show, that the show happens to kind of just capture what Katie does. Now, don't get me wrong. Katie can do things that are cheesy for camera and like storyline and stuff that's happened over the years. Um, I just mean in terms of like the drama they bring and the life they live, et cetera. And for Lala, I think that she will adjust her morals to fit whatever keeps this job. That's become clear. I think that's the part that's like, oh, OK, so you just will do whatever it takes to stay on production's good side, I guess, and make a good show, even though I don't think that the scenes that she is doing are good TV. I don't think that like the way she's done this 180 like when when Tom Sandoval walked into that weird dub, that weird like double date with the Toms and James and Lala, when Sandoval walked in, she's like, "Wow, you seem so happy." I was like, "Who are you talking to?" She what? She's like, "It's good to see you happy." I'm like, "What? Is, who is this person?" So she's just, I guess, kind of willing to not be. I don't know what's the word I'm looking for. A sellout. She's just kind of a sellout. And we've already known that about Sheena, obviously. We know Sheena's a sellout. It's just like Lala preaches authenticity and being honest and yada, yada, yada. Although apparently the reunion is going to be like, oh, everyone's going to understand why Lala has been so upset. But that's only according to Sheena. Obviously, Katie has not said that. And I honestly avoid listening to anything the Toms say in press. Um, oh, wait, but did you guys see... Sorry, I've got so much to talk about. Did you guys see that Tom Schwartz and whatever his girlfriend's name is, like Nick Vile fucking podcast, where Schwartz is like slunch, uh, like slouched down and he's got sunglasses on and he's like not even looking at her and he's talking about how she's the most beautiful girl he's ever laid eyes on and the room stopped and blah, blah, blah. Oh, creepy. Creepy all the way around. They're being very, very nice, but also like, childish and they were just so far apart. I don't know. It was really weird. I only saw a clip. I didn't listen to the whole thing because as I listened to the clip, I was like, oh, this is all they're going to talk about. Even if even if Tom, even if Schwartz were to mention something about the show, I don't want to hear what Tom has to say anymore. I don't care what Tom Schwartz fucking says. He's uh, he's just not important. But last week it was about that. And also last week was when uh, Joe and Schwartz like break up on camera, basically. But I, Joe claims 
she went on Rachel's podcast. I just I only saw um, a recap of it. So thank you to the accounts that did recaps of it. Joe claims that at the reunion, Schwartz is actually called out for being dishonest about the relationship. And Katie ap- even apologizes to Joe because it's clear that like Joe wasn't inventing that they were in a relationship that Schwartz actually was basically saying they're in a relationship and then acting different. Um, I don't know how much I can believe that Joe says because her perception of things is incredibly off. She's trying to say to our face that she didn't know about uh, Tom and Rachel. Like she's trying to say that to our face. Okay. So I don't know if I buy what she's what she's selling about the reunion. I also don't know if Schwartz actually said things that were what she heard or if she heard things that she wanted to hear type of a deal. Um, But I know this much. I know that Tom Schwartz was never open about him, his relationship with her. And that would have been a sign. I know people have started to feel bad for Joe. I just am not there. She actively pursued Schwartz after the divorce. And he was even reaching out to Katie being like, hey, does Schwartz need a haircut and shit like that? So he she pursued him and probably put him, put herself in front of him as much as she could. And Schwartz didn't deny the hangout after a while. Like you get drunk with someone enough times you're going to fuck. Like, that's just what's going to happen. So she like she forced herself into a situation ship and then was upset when Tom was saying repeatedly on on camera, I don't want to be in a relationship right now. I don't. Joe's just a friend over and over and over again. So to come into this season. uh, Thinking that she could get mic'd up, get a confessional and be like Schwartz's girlfriend when nothing he was saying when they were filming scenes indicated that and then they go to this singles date thing the speed dating thing and he's like kissing another girl and she's like what the fuck and acting really surprised and shocked and disrespected when i can't imagine this is the first time that he's been out mingling and whatever with other girls uh and so then they have to have this whole scene where he's like yeah no i don't want that And she's all heartbroken. But I'm like, girl, you kind of forced yourself into this man's life. As someone who's done that herself, I have only myself to blame or had only myself to blame. Like, I absolutely pursued someone who said repeatedly, I don't want a relationship. And I was like, what about now? What about now? What about now? And then it went down in flames. And that was on me. So I just don't feel bad for Joe. I really don't. She's also like, trying to make herself the victim like she doesn't understand why these women would be mad at her (laughs) i had no idea tom i i didn't know about tom and and rachel i was focused on schwartz okay and uh yet you thought that ariana and tom were breaking up but then you also went to thanksgivings at their house i don't girl mm -mm. so i don't feel bad for joe okay all right now to this current episode The Rachel podcast has come out and everyone has their thoughts, but Tom is milking it. He is milking it to the millionth degree, acting shocked and confused when we literally watched you go to a speed dating thing. You had chicks over that you met at See You Next Tuesday. You went on a date with What's Her Face. So this whole act that he is just heartbroken is ridic. Okay. Obviously, Sheena has her thoughts. Whoa. Sheena has her thoughts on things. Ariana has her thoughts on things. And they're the thoughts that you would expect. Um, James is kind of like, I don't even want to hear it. I don't care what she has to say. It's bullshit. All of it. Um, Everyone agrees, though, that Bethany (laughs) was the problem. And when we get into the after show, I just love how no one will say Bethany's name. That podcaster or that person whose podcast it was, there was there's no mentioning of Bethany's actual name, which I think is great. Um, okay, but so Tom's milking it, right? So Lisa shows up for the Tom Tom. Oh, wait, I forgot to mention. Lala has the nerve to ask Ariana if she can use her house 
to throw her donor party. And I'm like, I just thought that was a little bold considering you've been talking all this shit about Ariana's choice to stay there when she's still with Tom. I was like, okay, that's bold. I There's got to be a reason why she can't film. She can't have like a party at her place. Is it just that she doesn't have a big enough space? Maybe her building has a policy, like a certain number of people max. Maybe they don't want to film that. I don't know. Uh, there's got to be a reason. we've Because she's filmed in her place before. Maybe it's just not big enough or something. She thought it was so bold to ask freaking Ariana, of all people. Um, but anyway. So Lisa shows up for the Tom Tom brunch cocktail tasting and Sandoval is super late. So you've got Lisa Vanderpump waiting and she hates waiting and she probably was a little late herself. Uh, but in comes Tom sulking like a kid. He comes walking in there like, hey guys, like, yeah, it's me. I'm just so depressed and sad. But Lisa like coddles him. She's like, here, sit. I mean, he's literally got his elbows on the bar and his head in his hands spiraling. And then Lisa's fucking confessional. I don't want him to start spiraling because we finally got him to a place where he is starting to even out. What can Raquel possibly th say that's going to make anybody look at her in a better light? OK, let's break this down. He was weaponizing his mental health in that moment. He was not currently having suicidal ideation. Um, that was not he was talking about at that point. So you didn't turn anything around. You it wasn't. Oh, and by the way, I love that it was like a team effort for the group to get Tom back to a better place. But Ariana, she's fine. She's clearly doing just fine. She's not upset. What? What the fuck? OK, so there's just that right there. But not only can Tom Sandoval be the one that you have to coddle because everyone else be mean to him, he can be late. He can show up with an attitude. He can yell at you and you're still going to have his back. You are twisted, Miss Vanderpump. Twisted. OK, but then she says, what could Raquel possibly say that would make people see her in a better light? Well, what the hell could Tom Sandoval say? What could Tom Sandoval say that would put him in a better light? Huh? Do you see? Because he's going to only say things that make him more more unlikable. The more Tom talky talkies, the worse it gets. I mean, Raquel and him are kind of perfect for each other in that way. Tom goes, I'm thinking about what I want to do with the house now. Because, you know, Ariana took so long to get back to me. So, like, I'm thinking if I can even keep the house at all. Excuse me? How are you not saying that with, without following it up with, so Ariana might have been right, selling it might have been the way to go? How are you fucking saying it like it's Ariana's fault? She took so long to get back to me. So now my financial situation is different. Huh? Uh, no. That's not. Oh, I just I just really is. It's making me actually feel crazy because like that's not what it is. The, let me what it what it is, is I didn't re, I didn't factor in getting Ariana off the mortgage, which would make me have to refinance and would double my current my current mortgage payment. I didn't factor that in. I, I thought that she would just kind of let me keep her on the mortgage and I would just keep paying the bills as they were. So I guess that I wish he would fucking say that, but he can't say he can't say that. Instead, he's like, well, ugh, my financial situation has changed. You're crazy, dude, because if you couldn't if your financial situation has changed, that means you couldn't have bought her out. You couldn't have afforded it. So this that doesn't. Ugh, oh, it makes me crazy. It makes me so crazy. You idiot. God. I lose my words talking about this man. Uh, if I have to refinance, it would be more than double of what I'm currently paying. Yeah, dude. Yeah. So just admit, please. I know you never will. I don't think he's I don't think he thinks he's ever done anything wrong in his life. Everything was justified that he's ever done wrong in his life. But he can't just say, wow, I, I yeah, I forgot about that. 
Nope. My Well, duh, my financial situation changed because Ariana took so long. Honey, if you can't wait two months and your financial situation changes enough to where you can't take over the house, then you could have you couldn't have ever taken over the house. What is the status, by the way? Did they are they selling it? How, how do I not know what's going on in real time? Is he still there? Ooh, oh, that's why she's suing him. Oh, she's suing him because oh, okay, okay. So she sent now. I'm now I'm following. She sent the counter offer. He has been dragging his feet since because he's like I'm figuring out what I'm going to do, and so that's why she's suing him because it's like. You are you owe me money in some capacity, whichever it may be. I don't know what it is, but I want to sell the fucking house. Okay, now I get it. So she sent the counter. He took too long to get back to her because he's thinking about it. And she's like, no, bro, that's not how this works. Oh, okay. Now I get it. And then he has the nerve in the after show to be like, well, she's suing me. God, can't believe she's suing me. What else would she do? God damn. Lala shows up, though to talk to Lisa about using her house for the donor party. And I I just think it's so gross that Lisa keeps making Lala, like, prove she really wants to do this, you know, because she's like, I want to have my donor party. And Lisa's like, oh, what? She doesn't have a man. She wants another kid. What are you upset about? What are you? God, this, 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 again, old girl, this, like, uber traditional, like, oh, don't give up on love and marriage. What the fuck are you talking about? Let her, why does she need to be like, no, Lisa, I know I want this. And she's like, all right, then. Gross. Get over it, lady. She is an older woman. I get that. But like it, the bit is old by now. And you've been so encouraging of love. But look where this group has this group stands with love right now. Wrong audience. Uh, Sheena and Brock go over to Ariana's place. Look, I'm actually kind of relieved that they're finally addressing the messy house that both Ariana and Tom have lived in throughout the years. Because when Pia and I were covering the season three, whatever, for the Patreon, their place really, it wasn't just like, oh, it's a shitty place. It was just filthy. There was just shit everywhere. And I would honestly be like a Sheena or a Brock in this case and be like, it's all I can think about is your dirty house. Isn't there, wasn't there like a Friends episode too where Ma- Monica goes over to a chick that Ross dated who had a really, Ross dated this girl, <clears throat> excuse me, and she had a really messy house. And at the end of the episode, Monica goes, hi, uh, you don't know me, but my brother told me about your house and I'd really love to clean it. I feel like I get that. Because I, throughout the years, have had really messy friends, and I always end up cleaning their place. Because I can't even, like, be in the house when it's so messy and dirty and gross. So I kind of, like, understood them being like, okay, let's just help clean this up. Mind you, most of it is Tom's. So him trying to blame Ariana for being the messy one, you're both gross, I think. Because, and I, I get it, like, You could not be me, you guys. I in no way am I messy, but I also know people who are messy that are great people. And I just know that some people are messy. It's not a crime, but it's the it's Tom trying to blame Ariana like she's the only one when Tom is fucking gross, too. That's the part, you know, it's like Tom's trying to be like, I'm the one who does everything when that's just not the case. But I I understood she knows she's like, I've never known them to have the cleanest place. I'm like, thank you. And then they showed examples. I'm like, yes, it's it, it's always grossed me out. And even Ariana's not innocent on that factor, on that part either. OK, because Sheena's like, what about this? This has been here for six months. She's like, no. And then they put a thing three months because, you know, production, you know, production is also clocking that they show up to film at the house. So, you know, they're like aware they look around, they're like, okay, right? Um, but anyway, now Ariana has now heard from Logan, who heard Tom talking to Lisa, that he was having second thoughts on selling the house. And now she's like, and that's what I fucking wanted to do. And we could have done. And I could have been out of here. I wouldn't have had to be living here with this fucking psycho. Could have just sold it and been done with it. But you needed to torture me. And clearly, Ariana did need to stay put. 
because look, this guy was going to try to pull a fast one and he probably would have never moved out. She's got, she's having to sue him to get him to sell because technically he doesn't have ownership of the house anymore. If she's out and like the counter offer has been presented, you know, like who's helping this guy with his legal shit? Anybody? Uh, but also like this sort of makes me wish that Sheena would go, fuck, OK, so you were right to stay in the house. I don't know what's going to happen at the reunion, but even right there when Sheena hears Ariana say now he's having second thoughts on selling, I kind of I was hoping that Sheena would go, oh, shit. All right. Well, it's good then that you're. That you're not uh, that you didn't leave. Now I get why you stayed. Nothing. Instead, it's just like a look to Brock like, mm. like say she was give her something, you guys give her something. Okay, but Sheena's song Apples is coming out. And it's got a newly added Tom Diss lyric in there. Very, very small, but it's it, she added it fresh. Like, it wasn't apparently in there before. So I was like, well, that was a choice, especially since you're, like, trying to be good friends with Tom. Trying to, like, get back on a good place. I'm not trying to pile on. So, like, then you add that, right? Ariana has a new confessional look, and you guys, I'm not loving it. In fact, I'm actually hating it. I think the execution is so confusing. She actually did another confessional look that was not executed right last season for me, too. I get what they're going for with the hair, but there's like a crease in it where there's not supposed to be a crease. So it just looks like it's shifted wrong. The makeup isn't quite right. And the way the it just feels odd and not not fully not properly realized. So I don't I was very distracted by this, by the whole look. It's like a sheer bodysuit. Uh, and I love a bodysuit. And I love the I love her going for it. But I almost the hair really throws me off. The hair is just very, very bad. And the makeup's not like I want to blend it a little. But I know they were going for. I don't know. I don't know. I have a quality problem. And this is a problem I wouldn't trade for anything. And that is I've lost some weight and most of my clothes don't fit. So I have a problem to solve, and I'm putting that in quotes because honestly, couldn't be happier, but I need to now get a bunch of clothes that fit me. And so I'm loving Quince because Quince gives you luxury essentials at affordable prices. Like I got this purse here. This purse is so well made. It's so fab. Now I know that this is a one size fits all situation, but literally this purse has become my entire personality and I just want to show it off whenever I can. <laughs> but I've also gotten a Mongolian cashmere sweater for $50. And I've got my eye on some silk tops. Also, they've got jewelry, 14 karat gold jewelry. And this is how Quince can price things so affordably. They partner directly with top factories. So that cuts out the middleman. They give those savings to us. And here's the most important part of this is that Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes. I love that. So indulge in affordable luxury. Go to quince.com slash she speaks for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash she speaks to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash she speaks. So Tom has a rehearsal. It's so off key. And they cut over to the background vocalist even going, whoa, when Tom sings off key. That's how the entire show is, you guys. The entire fucking show is sung off key like that. And it's, like I said before, like a two-hour show. It wouldn't stop. Okay. And the only reason we stayed till the end was because James was performing after. And I'm like, can we get to it already? Um. Tom, though, is wearing a dipped out shirt. A dipped out shirt. Fucking audacity. The, I mean, did you make that? Are you selling that as merch? Are you selling dipped out merch, sir? Oh, OK. Wow. Wow. Dipped out. You know, Oh, my God. 
So Tom, pull, when James shows up, Tom pulls James aside to have like a scene. And it's one of the best scenes of the whole season, honestly, because finally James gets to just not he's he's not having it. He's not here for Tom being like, we were in love. OK, we were in love. And now she's just throwing me away. And James is like, I don't want to sit here and talk shit about Raquel. OK. And then Tom goes, I just didn't have any closure. And James goes, fuck closure. She's working on herself. And then Tom, like, isn't getting the reaction he's expecting from James. So he tries to rile him up. And he goes, she said that when she asked you to stop drinking, she did it with the thought that you wouldn't be able to do it. What a convoluted, stupid thing to say. So I feel like that's kind of a normal thing for her to assume. I'm going to offer this ultimatum. He probably won't stick to it. So I have to be prepared to break up with him if he doesn't. That's this was you pull. Because that's what narcissists do that for sure. They pull something to like stab you with it. And it's triangulate. It's very it's like, oh, this person said this about you. And James goes and retaliates in the best possible way by going. She also said on the podcast that she was never in love with you. And Tom's like, oh, yeah, I know. I heard that. And he goes, and how she got with you because she was still in love with me. Hmm. Huh? Like, and. OK, you want to go there? You want to fucking. So he starts to get himself pissed off because he can t he knows what, t what Tom's trying to do to him. He knows. So he goes, I wouldn't put too much thought into that one. I don't believe you guys were ever in love. I think you guys had a fuck fest for however many months it was. Tom's like, dude, no fucking way. We talked for like five hours. And if we had sex, it was just like for a little bit. Ew. 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 He's like, we hung out for five hours and then we like had sex for like three minutes. But then we went back to talking. OK, cool. Thank you. You <laughs> fuck God. So, so gross. And then James goes, well, you're a liar, though, Tom. That's the facts. And Tom goes, that's not facts. That's your opinion. And James goes, James goes, well, it's hers, too. And she said it. And then he throws a curveball and he goes, what you and Ariana had was true love. And for fucking Tom, like, are you not listening? He goes, you don't know that. Oh, what? James goes, you looked me dead in the eyes for years and told me that. It's like you forget. It's crazy. Rewrite history and rewind. And he goes, I'm not opening up with you at the fucking El Rey. I've moved on to bigger and better things. This is a joke to me. Bye. And then G uh, Tom goes like under his breath. He goes, go push some buttons on your laptop. And James like, what'd you say? What'd you say? Say it with your whole chest. What'd you say to my face? He's like, we'll go push buttons on your laptop. And James is, he's like, okay, cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because, okay. Because you're so talented, by the way, Tom. Because that we just saw this rehearsal and we were blown away by your vocal abilities and your clear, raw, pure talent. That's exactly why people go to your fucking show. Okay. Please. So Tom Sandoval, and with he's so fucking serious too. He asks Schwartz, he gives him a little proposition. And the proposition is you move in here. We get alone together. We get alone together. And you pay half, you pay six thousand dollars. What? That's not a nice thing to do to a friend. <laughs> it's like, do you hate him? Yes, I think deep down, deep down, Schwartz is just a pawn for Tom Sandoval. He's like, I need this. So Tom Schwartz, give it to me. But like the nerve to first, he's like, OK, so I need a roommate. Six thousand a month. And he's like, what the fuck? No, I, I need I don't even have any equity in this. He's like, well, OK, we would get a loan. We would get a loan for what? Like, sir, I'm still recovering from, like, having to downsize, get into an apartment and, like, dealing with Schwartz and Sandys. And come on, man. What are you talking about? He's like, so no? Yeah, so no. Sandoval. No. You're, this man, it, he is just caressing. Um, all right. The donor party. Not Allie being all messy and right away telling Katie, like, so I hear that you're miserable and getting upset over nothing. What was that? Mm hmm. Yeah, Lala said it. Now, OK, Lala's going to eventually get off on a technicality because I didn't say miserable, but that's 
very like Tamra judge of her to be like, well, technically I said, you know, very pussy, very pussy move, Lala, for being so big and bad. You know, I never said miserable. I just said unhappy, getting upset over everything. I'm pretty sure you actually have said miserable now that I think about it in like a confessional or something when talking about Katie. I'm like, ah, you, actually, you might have. So you know what? Um, but I have to say Katie does an amazing job of just stuffing that knowledge down, not giving it any way and not ruining Lala's event. She just she plays all the games and she just goes with it. And I I I kind of hate to say this, guys, but I didn't hate the activities. I was like, oh, this actually this I feel like I, I hate giving Lala credit, but I feel like this could actually inspire a lot of women. Like this is a fun way to include everybody in this process that typically is just kind of lonely. So I I don't I don't hate it. I don't hate that she did it. Was it interesting, compelling television? No. What I also noticed was how genuinely happy Ariana seemed for Lala. Like she seemed genuinely excited, happy, thrilled. And um, it just makes me sad. It makes me sad because then Ariana is going to be, she's been watching this season like, oh, that's what's been said. Okay. And then here's this footage of her supporting Lala. You know, it's just she really got a raw deal, man. And she knew it. Ariana knew it. She's like, I'm probably going to get a villain edit. That's probably what's going to happen to me. James and Allie have a bit of a tough conversation about kids and marriage and whatnot. But when James talks about it in the after show, he's like, we're fine. So I'm not going to give it too much weight, honestly. All right, the Tom Tom brunch is underway, the first brunch. I'm obsessed, though, that the pump sign is up there because the Toms really try to make it seem like Tom Tom is theirs, but they're such small. I mean, honestly, they should they should have a little bit more say in it, but Lisa includes them in no decision making. And she's like, oh, I'm sticking the pump sign next to the Tom Tom sign. And that's going to stay there because I'm going to have both, which honestly looks really stupid. Like it doesn't it doesn't look good, but I just like that they can't say anything about it. And it's their, this is their baby. Tom Tom is like, but you don't have any say. So it has to be that. The girls, my God, they get them a feast. This brunt, there was a steak involved. I'm like, what is a what is a platter? It is a platter and a half, I tell you. Uh, but Lala is like, so Allie and Katie, what were you guys talking about over at the donor party thing before we got into the activities? And that's where Lala gets off on a technical. I didn't didn't I didn't say miserable. Um, but Lala says, look, Katie, I want to know that I don't trigger you because at Foxfire, you said you don't think I'm loyal or consistent. And Katie goes, well, no, it's more that. And this is so true. It's more that you're showing your softness to everyone, to be basically people who aren't as deserving as maybe me <laughs> or Ariana. Like you're not showing softness to the friends that you have. So why is like Joe getting it? And that's a very valid point. Lala, to me, this was the tell. Lala says, well, look, we used to be inseparable. And now you and Ariana are really close. I don't know my place. And I go, oh, is that like the crux of this? Is that like, like you kind of weren't sure exactly where, where you and Katie fit or whatever, or you just don't like Ariana, or did you are you maybe accusing Katie of buddying up to Ariana because Ariana was like the number one? I don't know. That there was there was a lot in that statement. I don't know my place. Hmm? Place with who? And Katie's like, that's not me at all. Like I and she and Katie goes, I don't have a person, I don't have a boyfriend, a kid, I don't have all I have all this time in the world to hang out. So don't feel like I don't have time for you. And then she actually gets like emotional. She goes, that make, makes me feel sad. And then Sheena thinks she can, <laughs> Sheena thinks she can chime in. She's like, one of the things that I've learned being friends with Lala is she needs people checking in on her. And Katie's like, I mean, I do. And Lala is now crying. And Katie goes, the reason we're not close is because you don't have a single moment to hang out. And then Lala has to admit, all right, Katie's right. Oh, is she? 
She goes, I don't take a lot of time to be with you, but I need you to know that I love you for just the person that you are. All I'm asking for is to show up for each other. Let's just get back to that. Well, I I feel like Katie thinks she's showing up. I also think that when Sheena said this to Lala, when Sheena said, what I've learned being friends with Lala, oh, wait, I'm thinking of something else. Remember in the after show when Lala said that the people who check in on her the least are Ariana, Katie, and Tom Sandoval? Like throughout the years, she says that they've been the ones who are the least like proactive in checking in with her. So that's probably why Sheena said when I have learned about Lala is that she needs people checking in on her. Probably because Lala has said to Sheena, she never checks in with me. And now either Lala is being fake to Sheena and not admitting like I don't make time for her or she's just being a pussy and doesn't want to say to Katie's face, I don't feel like you check in with me enough. Either way, she and then she's going to allegedly, according to Sheena, she's going to get mad uh, at people at the reunion, this coming reunion, Lala will, uh, because she's no one's being honest. So here's this moment where I'm trying to figure out who was dishonest or what, because I know that Lala herself said that Katie was one of the people that didn't check in on her a lot. And here's Sheena going, well, that's something that she needs. And Lala's like, actually, I also don't check in with you. Lala sucks. Lala fucking sucks. Sheena, so Sheena walks over to the Toms. Oh, God. And uh, she's like, so, Tom, how are you feeling after, like, all the Rachel stuff? And Tom's all, I didn't get any clue. He's going on and on and on. I didn't get any closure. And Sheena was just looking. She was just looking for her little window there. And she goes, none of us are going to get closure. So I wrote a song about it. (laughs) Okay. Okay. There's a couple specific lines that are open to interpretation. The lyric is, from a Ferrari to a Jetta, thought you knew better. And Tom is like, he, what does he say? Keep profiting off my misery. Okay. I do think that Sheena would admit that she milked it the most. And let's go to the after show. Schwartz says, I think Sheena, we can say milked it the most. But then she, he's also like, there's an element of it, though, that she was making such good money. Maybe she could have even, like, come to you and said, look, I know that we need to back off, but, like, the money is so good. And I can't really say no to it right now, and I don't want to stop. Um, that would have been a really savage thing to do, though. Like, Tom, I know we're cool, but I'm going to keep milking this because, honestly, like, you have no idea. I've made a lot of money. <laughs> like, that would have been wild. But also, wow, respect. I just don't think she could. I don't think anyone could do that, honestly. Um, also, in the after show, they get into like whether or not I, I, I found the after show to be like not that vital in terms of viewing. Like the, all the other after shows have been like you must watch. But this one, I was like, oh, okay, it's just kind of repetitive at this point. Um, Lala thinking that she's sounding so innovative and 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 uh, deep for saying that i think with rachel she just was she bought into the the story that sandoval sold her and blah blah blah. i'm like we already know we already know thank you lala of course she's like i'm relating it to my experience no shit you relate everything to your experience um but one thing i found interesting in the after show was so in in the podcast rachel talks about how her relationship with sheena was mutually beneficial in terms of finances because she was helping pay rent whatever. But Sheena's like, she paid me a thousand dollars and maybe covered a utility bill. And she keeps repeating like it was a thousand dollars towards my like forty three hundred dollar rent, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, OK, but it still does. I did think she lived there rent free. You did really present it like she lived there completely rent free. And now you're like, it was only she didn't pay for parking. She didn't pay for this. She didn't pay for that. It's like, well, yeah, because, you know, you let her just pay you a thousand dollars. So. And yes, she had sex in your bed. That was really egregious and really, really creepy and gross because she had a bed. So why'd you like that? Yes, I I, I agree. But finding out that Sheena's confirming like she did pay you a thousand dollars and she paid a utility bill. I'm like, all right, that's a little less taking advantage than I originally thought, Sheena. OK, just it's still not great, but like, no, no, no. But I really do love no one is saying Bethany's name. Nobody. And they're all just talking shit about how ignorant she was for not knowing what the story, not knowing the background uh, and how Bethany's bitching about 
Rachel being exploited. Meanwhile, she's not paying Rachel to be there. Therefore, like kind of exploiting Rachel. Right. Although now Rachel has her podcast on Bethany's network. And so that's supposed to be like, oh, OK, she she didn't get paid for the interview, but she has a whole podcast. It's like still what you should have paid her for the interview. OK, so she says it's like the one interview she's doing, like she could have gotten paid to do another interview and you didn't pay her to do yours, Bethany. Um, Jack's go. There's a whole segment about Jax's opinion on Kristen having kids. It's like, it's just gross. And then Jax goes, I know what's going to happen. We're going to end up having to help Kristen because Luke's going to take off. I, I really highly doubt that you are going to be requested to come help her. She has enough other people to help, please. Like, no one's asking you. Um, Sheena, she, she can't take ownership for anything. The, the producer's like, so how did the song Apples come about? She's like, well, I went into the studio and they were like, what's been going on? And I was like, well, I told them about my friends having an affair and they were like, we're making a song about that. So that's how it happened. I'm like, bitch, you walked in there with like, we're making a song about this. And also, like, they didn't already know this story. Like, they were brand new. They had no, please, Sheena, just stand for something. Come on. I Nothing's ever her fault. Ever her fault. Um, oh, the only thing that the other thing I really found that interesting that we didn't already discuss in the main recap um, is Lala in reference to saying Katie's miserable. She's like, I, mean, I went out of my way not to say that word. But she goes, Katie has confided in me that she just said she didn't picture her life like this. You know, she didn't picture being single two years after being divorced. I'm like. Well, that doesn't make her miserable. Or, you know what I mean? Like, th it's like cause and effect right now with Katie. You know, the cause is you randomly going to lunch with Joe and not even letting her know, like, hey, I'm going to go to lunch with Joe. Production really wants me to do it. Is, you know, just letting you know. It doesn't mean I don't love you. I'm just going to hear her side of it. Like, Katie would have been cool. I really do think that Katie would have been like, okay. Because Katie also do, does understand the game and the and the show and all that stuff. You didn't even let her know. So, like, she has a reason to be annoyed and mad. And instead you're like, oh, my God, you're just so miserable about everything. No, it's not the case. That is not fair. And Katie says the same. Katie is a pretty... Although Katie's having a hard time finishing her thoughts as of late. She used to sort of stand in it more. I noticed it's on her podcast. I noticed in the after show. I noticed when she was on, I think she went on, who was other podcast? Did she, oh, Danny Pellegrino's. So Katie will start a sentence. I'm going to try to give an example. Um, Katie will say something like, you know, Lala went to lunch with Joe. And I don't know if maybe it was like, I don't know if she was like, I don't know, maybe like, I don't, I don't know, like maybe. And I'm not kidding. It's that much of a pause and a stop and a pause and a stop that I had to stop listening to the Danny Pellegrino interview. That uh, she just kept. She's so. I think that Katie's in a zone of trying to be as careful as possible to not ignite a huge feud or a huge fight or something, um, because she's not. She's having a hard time like finishing her thought when it comes to Lala specifically. She can't. I don't think she she either doesn't want to give it more airtime because I feel like part of this is for for Katie. She goes, is this because she just wants drama and she wants to keep the show like she wants to stay relevant or something? All this extra stuff that Lala does. Um, but Ka I feel like Katie it just doesn't really want to touch it. So she can't quite finish the point that she wants to make. Like she was an example. A better example would be when she was talking about um I think uh, Danny says something like, yeah, you know, like now Lala and Schwartz are friends. And she goes, no, I think they're like, I mean, they're, you know, like like acquaintances. Like, I don't I don't, like I don't even know. Like, I think they're like, a, a you know, whoa, girl, get it out. So she it's a very delicate situation. Clearly, Katie doesn't want to disrupt it too much. Lala doesn't fucking care. Lala, like actively, openly hates Katie and Ariana. I need to see this fucking reunion already. Why? What 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 comes out of the reunion that's going to make us like, oh, my God, everything is different now. Because I I'm, I'm always open to it. Always. I just can't imagine what it could be, you know. So 
Anyway, the after show like wasn't that thrilling. So there was that was only stuff that really stood out and was worth like mentioning. One of my many phases during COVID was being a drop shipper. And I learned all about how to run an e-commerce business. And I said, this is hard. So if you are an e-commerce business owner, you can relate to the amount of work that goes into it. And you probably want to optimize your workflow and reduce your costs, especially with shipping. I had no idea shipping was so expensive. I'm usually the consumer. But in order to break a profit, you have got to find good, affordable shipping. But it also has to be reliable. Otherwise, you're going to get all kinds of bad reviews. It's not easy. So ShipStation has an easy-to-use dashboard. You can automate shipping tasks. You can manage orders. You can print labels. But then the other part that's ideal is you can save thousands on shipping costs because you get discounts up to 89% off UPS, DHL Express, USPS. Over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce business with ShipStation and 98% of companies that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life. So that says everything you need to know. You can also scale your business and reduce warehouse costs because ShipStation's reliable enterprise solutions does that for you. ShipStation is the innovative tool that helps turn your shipping challenges into opportunities opportunities for growth. Go to ShipStation.com and use code SHESPEAKS to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, code SHESPEAKS. Let's get into the valley. There's a girls' night thing happening in Malibu, and then the guys get together and do like a pool thing. But before Brittany leaves for Malibu, we get a glimpse into how Jax treats her, which is lovely, quite lovely. Um, it's weird because it's she's it's the same thing. We've already seen it. So it's just like this has been going on this whole time where she's like, OK, you know, I'm going to go. I got to don't forget the tequila. And he's like, oh, God, heaven forbid you forget that. And he's saying shit like that. And she's just like not say, not saying anything back, just kind of looking at him and like stuffing her feelings. And her her explanation is that he's just always negative and she tries to be positive, but he's just always negative. I'm like, yeah, he's been like this for a long time. So. Okay. And then Jax's spiel about how he's the only one who cleans up. He's the only one who keeps the place looking good. Um, that's just his thing, his OCD, really just making Brittany out to just be like a sack of lazy shit, basically. Okay. Um, he like he says some nasty stuff to her though. They did this flashback of another scene where she's hungover and he's like, Stop fucking drinking. If you want more kids, act like a mom. Whoa. So, okay. Uh, Janet picks up Brittany, though, and she, Brittany's, she gets a text from Jax, and it's like, don't worry about us, because have fun. And she's like, see, Janet, like, here's the proof that he is, he's saying that now. Uh, but, you know, when I get home, I always end up getting in trouble for it later. And then Janet's confessional. She goes, sometimes I get concerned with how lit Brittany's getting, I'll be honest. But at the same time, she's married to Jax Taylor. I don't know if I like Janet. I feel like Janet's a little snaky. She kind of, she like throws people under the bus in her confessionals, but she doesn't say a lot in, in the scene. So she told us all about Michelle supporting the don't say gay bill, allegedly. I still don't know if that's really what was happening or what. Uh, but then in the scene, she just purely blames Kristen and that's all they focus on. And to this day, she still hasn't said, well, I was concerned about the don't say gay bill thing. and so. We're going to talk about that. No. OK. But then and then so she throws so she throws Michelle under the bus in her confessional with that by saying she supported this don't say gay bill. There's that. Then she has no problem talking shit about Kristen, um, which is it's that's this is a hard thing for poor Kristen. Well, not poor Kristen, but for Kristen is that she just it's it's hard to feel bad for Kristen, you know. So when someone talks shit about her, you're like, well, it's probably true. Um, but then now here's. This one little this to say, I sometimes get concerned with how lit Britney's getting. You know, that's that's some shade. That's that's some shade. So I just don't know. I don't know what vibe I'm getting from Janet. I can't I can't quite tell. And mind you, this came from Jax. But Jax did say that she's a lot like me and she stirs shit up and then kind of like steps back. So I don't always love that. But I guess you sort of need it. I don't know. She's also pregnant so maybe we're not getting full full scope janet but i just i'm getting like i'm getting sneaky vibes over there 
Also, the way she like looks at people's homes and thinks it's really cute. And she's like, oh, yeah, I like looked it up. I know when they sold it. I know all this stuff. I'm like, okay, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Ew to Michelle. Let me get into this, too. Uh, Michelle, this is to discuss last week. I should have done this at the top. But anyway, um, Michelle and Jesse, the way they're dealing with Kristen is vile. It's disgusting. Okay, the way Kristen had to come out there and Zach brings her out and she's crying and she's apologizing and they're just looking at her like, okay. All right. And then Jesse's like, do you or Michelle goes, I think you need help. Now, I listen. You might think I'm maybe I'm wrong here, but to me, I actually do believe that Kristen like did just repeat wrong, maybe what she heard. Was she stupid for doing that, that it would eventually end up on camera? Yeah, you should just not you should just be out of it. Kristen, because now you're in it. And like that was dumb on your part. And I know you were just trying to throw Janet under the bus. And in the process, you fucked up and threw yourself under the bus, which is very Kristen, by the way. Um, But for them to be like, you need help. She's here presenting herself in front of you, begging for forgiveness. Okay, And Michelle keeps being like, "Okay, you keep saying repeat, but they're all saying they didn't even say it. And she's like, "Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And when Kristen said, I've been protecting you, Michelle, not to say that in the group setting ominously like that. Absolutely. That's fighting words for sure. It's like, what the fuck does that mean? Now everyone has questions. What are you protecting her from? At Kristen said on Watch What Happens Live, she was on Watch What Happens Live with Shorts. Uh, she said, just keep watching. It will come out. And most likely that's what next week is going to be about is the, you know, Jesse going like, if you're about to bring something out that I don't know, then. I'm done. And it's Michelle's clearly hiding something. OK, because everyone's kind of alluding to things and it's clear she's done. Uh, we'll get into that, though. But the, just about this, the way Michelle is treating Kristen. Is gross to me for her to say, please don't have a kid because we don't need more of you around is so unnecessary. And I think that because they always film confessionals or interviews like after they've done principal photography, I feel like part of her venom towards Kristen must also have to do with whatever is going to happen next week and like the allegations and stuff like that. That's just my guess. Um, but to say we don't need more of you, you need, to, you need to back up, girl. Back it the hell up. The girls do a painting thing when they get to Malibu. And this Malibu place is stunning and it's because Nia's friend who was like one of the other Miss Universes or whatever the hell they are uh, she was supposed to be staying there but she doesn't need to anymore whatever so Nia is the one who hooked them up with this place and so they're doing this painting thing and they have they have to set intentions well they don't have to they're asked to set intentions Michelle says that this has been one of the hardest years of her life her intention is love and Kristen goes, my intention is peace because I feel like there's been issues and like lack of trust. And I think if we could all be more empathetic, which is what I try to lead with, I cannot help but feel every single person's feelings when I'm in a room and then I take it home with me. OK, I'm sorry. I believe her. I believe that she does take on everybody's feelings. But I also believe that Kristen is just like one of those people who can barrel through it. And I, I do believe her. I do. Is that crazy? You might think I'm crazy, but I do believe her. And she goes, it's so hard to be an empath. And they put together this amazing compilation of, <laughs> of her being savage, like suck a dick. And um, the best is at the end of it, they go, stop interrupting me. And they like distort it. <laughs> so no one else believes that Kristen is an empath. Maybe that's not the right word. I don't think she's an empath. I do think she's very aware of what everyone else is feeling. And I mean, no one seems to take, no one seems to believe Kristen. So maybe I'm wrong to believe her. <laughs> but I feel like they're just being oddly hard on her. And I just don't like it. They're being so fucking hard on her. And I'm like, Michelle, did you support the don't say gay bill or not? I need to understand. Not like it would matter because that was in Florida. It wasn't even here. But still. Nia opens up, though, about her postpartum. 
She is such a sweet, precious baby angel. I love her so much. She's so sweet, and it's heartbreaking to hear her journey and her struggle. And so many women can relate. Like she really is her and Danny, they're just such little stars together. They're they're a great, they're a great example of a couple to have um, on television, I must say. Meanwhile, over at the guy's pool day, Jesse has he says something. He goes, Isabel when Isabella's with me, she's great, but when she's with Michelle, she's a kamikaze. Okay, now you're throwing her parenting under the bus. That's not great. And then Jax goes, Hey, how's therapy going? And he goes, Jesse goes, It's a disaster. Oh, <laughs> that's not good. It's a disaster. Uh-oh. Meanwhile, Brittany's over there talking to Michelle. She pulls Michelle aside because she's like, okay, you were saying some some shit about it being a hard year and whatever. And she goes, are you just totally unhappy? And Michelle says, I'm more unhappy than I am happy. And she's felt like this since Isabella was born. And we get the history on it. There was It was COVID. It was locked down. So he was super hands-on. But then when everything opened back up, he just gone. So she's like, it's a long time for me to have felt alone. Um, Jesse also then tells the guys about how a year ago, Michelle came to him and said, I got an apartment and I want to leave you. But he basically begged for a second chance and wants to work on wanted to work on the things that she wanted him to work on. Even though he hasn't at all, like even a little bit. Um, But she says to Brittany, I'm starting to feel the way I felt a year ago when I was like, I'm going to leave. So then the guys bring up Michelle hanging out with a director whose name they're bleeping out. Um, I don't know who, and I'm not even going to try to figure out who it is. Um, But they're all like, whoa, is that like, are you cool with that? And Jesse goes, I told her, hike up your skirt and pull your blouse down, do whatever you got to do. I'm assuming that's, Jax points out that she's a realtor. So maybe this is like a potential client and maybe that's what Jesse was saying. But regardless, we're all like, what the fuck are you saying, dude? And then Luke, because <laughs> he don't give a fuck. Luke goes, I don't know that much, but not many of us would be cool with our girl hanging out with a guy that's super famous and wealthy. And and then Jesse goes like his nostrils flare. He's, he's like he's he truly becomes like like a bull going for the he's seeing red and he goes i think when you're secure enough in your relationship and yourself you trust that she's not going to do anything and luke's like "Mm?" because luke has tea and he's like okay and jesse goes and if she does do something then i get to tell isabella for the next 40 years that her mom fucked everything up so much, so many things to say about that. So many things to fucking say about that. The what you so you think that sh- Michelle, who wanted to leave you a year ago, okay, because of X, Y, and Z, you said please, 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 please don't do it. I want to, I want to work on what you want me to work on. You don't work on those things because she's still saying that you're too hard on her, that you don't compliment her. To just, just the other day, she said that. So you're not working on those things. If she were to have had an affair, you wouldn't you wouldn't take any blame. You couldn't you can't wait for her to fuck up like that so that you can tell her daughter that she ruined everything. You are sick, my friend. You are sick. OK, that is a psycho thing to say, because that's your daughter. You don't want your daughter to hate her mom, but you would. You would because you're like, see, I'm not that bad. And we find out that's a this is a deal breaker for Je- Jesse will not forgive if she does anything he would not forgive it and Luke's like um what does Luke say I know something that could like ruin everything and the producer's like I'm so sorry what he's like I just uh yeah it's going to come out obviously so <laughs> okay the girls play a, some game and it leads to Brittany opening up about her sex life with Jax. And uh, she talks about how it's been like a month and a half. He doesn't make her feel sexy, puts her down a lot. Um, 
But then Brittany does say, she's like, Jax would freak out if he knew I was talking about our sex life, which definitely says that when they started, when they agreed to do the show, he was like, don't fucking talk about our sex life and don't, don't like do all that stuff. Don't tell people what's going on there, which is crazy, right? Like, why? Why does it need to be a secret, sir? Because Jax fucking sucks. It's so much easier to watch all these Britney Jax moments knowing that they're not together anymore. It doesn't give like a relief. It's like, okay, good. Not like, because we don't have to like sit through another season of her being like, that's my man, that's my husband. Unfortunately, Daniel, uh, the AC has gone out and Daniel is texting Nia, please come home. There's no AC. The kids won't stop crying. It's hot. Um, I get I get Jasmine being like she needed this, dude. She really, really did. Um, but I don't know the first thing about taking care of three goddamn children under two. And it's no joke. The heat in the valley is no joke. Truly. When your AC goes out, like you go somewhere else. Like my sister's AC, my sister was in Encino. That's where I was for the last couple of years. And I wasn't there for it. But no, actually, I was. The AC did go out one time and it is like emergency. Like you call around, like, do you have AC? Because I'm coming over because it's scary. Okay. It's hot. And with three kids under two, oh, kill me. So I kind of, <laughs> I don't blame Danny. I, you know, anyway. The next day, Kristen has already left. She still does that. My mom used to do that. When my mom would go um, over to people's houses, she would leave like really early in the morning because like she would have anxiety or something. That's totally Kristen. That's so Kristen. Um, Brittany's so hungover. She's like about to throw up. She can barely get in the car. Um, Back at home, though, they're like, br they're brushing teeth. Brittany and Jax are brushing teeth with Cruz. How did I not realize that Jax had all fake teeth? Was that since the show? Like, was that from the beginning? Because he actually doesn't have, his teeth are not too bad. They're not like the teeth we're used to getting, which is just like, that's all we see. Um, But I'm like, was this a new thing after like a couple? I can't, I really like. Excuse me, I don't remember. Yeah, I I really don't I cuz I always notice teeth. I'm of course staring at Britney's mouth because she never had like two it looks like she has like buck teeth, like two front buck teeth. Now, she never used to have that. So either she either she got some teeth or it's really just from that work she had done, but it I think it's the teeth. I guess. Uh, okay, Jax has to give Britney all sorts of hell for being so hungover that she's throwing up and all that. Um, Jax, he, this is what he said, tried to say when uh, Britney was still drinking when she had the ulcer. You know, he's he pulls this like this tactic. We need you. You know, if you keep if you keep this up, you're going to destroy your body. You know, this is his confessional. Like you could it's California. You could smoke a joint. You don't need to get so shit faced. Britney's, of course, like, you go out and get drunk all the time. And he's like, not like that. Not like that. I, I, I don't believe anything that comes out of Jax's mouth. I wouldn't be surprised if Jax went out and got wasted all the time and just is giving her shit. But I'm only seeing Britney do it right now. So I, I don't know. The reason I'm saying that is because Britney then changes the subject to bring up Jesse and Michelle and how they're not doing well. <clears throat> And she uses that to compare to them and says, that's why we need to work on things now. So in a year, we're not where they are. And Jax's only question to that or only response to that is, how deep into our sex life did you get? Well, he is concerned with that, you guys. And he, OK, well, hold on, though. I don't think he cheated because even Kristen doesn't think he cheated. And Kristen would fucking call it out. Kristen would also have figured it out. She knows all the ways. So I am starting to think that maybe he really did just shut down sexually down there for a period of time. I don't know. Maybe am I being naive? Because Kristen would never cover up for Jax Taylor. You know, like she wouldn't do that. And she doesn't think he cheated. She, quote, knows he didn't cheat. But Brittany goes, step up the game for the sex stuff. And the reason why I said anything about maybe Jax doesn't go out and get as wasted or whatever is because, like, it's a very unattractive quality in a partner. If when you do see them go out and party, it's, like, sloppy and drunk and puking and, like, 
there it, it it doesn't get the libido going all that well. Um, I don't, I don't know. I just don't want to like. Britney is not innocent, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I don't want to feel like all bad for poor Britney. Britney made the choice to stay with Jax despite all the shit that was happening, and. I don't I just don't want to keep feeling like all oh, like poor Britney. I just don't know if I can do that. I'm gr- I'm glad she's out of there, but it's like you still stood by this man during gross stuff, okay? So I don't know. And if you know, of course Jax wasn't going to find you attractive no matter what happened to your body after you gave birth to his child. A real man wouldn't care and would just think you're the most beautiful thing no matter what. But not Jax. Jax is a disgusting piece of shit. Duh. God, that was harsh. Is that too harsh? But Jax is gross like that. He's an asshole. So it just, like, I don't know. <laughs> I I just have a hard time feeling just so bad for Britney. Because, like, girl, you knew you knew who this man was. And, of course, her body's changed. She feels insecure and she wants him to validate her. That's not going to be what he does. Nope, not at all. You've, you're going to have to put a ton of effort into looking hot for him. But it's also it's so hard. Once you get into this, once you get into that rut and you get further far enough down the rut, it's really hard to reverse it because one, both of you are like, you need to give me something before I can give you something, you know, but it's Jackson, Brittany. So it's like hard to analyze it. But the part that I took away from this conversation is both of them vehemently saying divorce is not even in the in our vocabulary. The D word will never come up. We're thick as thieves no matter what. It's just wild to watch that like and well. The last scene of this episode is Michelle and Jesse having a conversation. It's, this is honestly like from a scene study, like an actor perspective, this would be a great scene to perform with a partner because there there is layers and there's just depth to it. Oh, it's like Jesse is such a complicated little asshole, right? But yet here he is in tears saying he wants to make it work. And here Michelle is done over it, checked out because she had no other choice, basically, and also heartbroken and sad. It was a great scene. Like, I don't we don't normally like to see unhappy couples because it does get a little toxic and like like Kyle and Amanda. I'm like, I don't really want to see this anymore. But for some Jesse and Michelle, there's just an interesting character development to watch. Like, it fascinates me. The the therapy scene. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because I know that the relationship is done. And maybe because Jesse's such an asshole. So. And I don't really have an attachment to Michelle, so I'm really just coming in. It's not like Jax and Brittany. I've watched them for long enough, and it's like I have my opinions. It's where this is just fascinating to come in at this moment in their lives, not knowing them prior to this and just getting this. It's like, oh, my God, there's so much to this. So I love it. Um... Okay, I didn't listen to any other podcasts. I didn't see any clips. I like went looking like by wig hello drama. By the way, shout out to by wig hello drama. I get so much of my content from them. Um, not like the content I make, but I mean like whenever I, I that's where I go. I go and I look at their page to see what what have I missed because they don't miss anything. It's amazing, an amazing account. I'm sure you already follow it. Um, but I didn't really see a lot of clips or anything from like Lala's podcast that was interesting. And I'm honestly kind of tired of. I, let's just get to the reunion and let me just see. Let me just see what happens. OK, because I'm done hearing you talk shit. But I haven't. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'm missing a bunch of stuff. So let me know if I miss something and I'll do my best to address it. I could even maybe address it if I miss something big. Uh, let me know and I'll try to address it on the wrap up. Um, If I haven't already, we already have an action packed week, though. We have uh, Candace is pregnant. Alexia and Todd, Todd has filed for divorce. Total shock to her. And she's admit, she's like, I had no idea that was happening. And Crystal is out. Now, I'm wait, I'm like, Dory better be gone, too. If Dory gets through another fucking round of contracts. Uh, uh-uh. I don't know if I'm going to even be able to watch another season as it is. I, I don't I, I, I need to see where the cast ends up, because as of now, obviously, Anna Marie was not coming back. But Crystal. Crystal, you're not coming back and Dorit's still there. 
Okay. We need to, but there's still time. There's still time to, I think, right? There's still time to not send out contracts. I don't know. Or maybe they're spacing it out. Uh, so yeah, let's see. Let's see where this lands because um, I'm not kidding. If Dorit gets another, if Dorit gets another season, then they really are just playing favorites with the like certain cast members, you know, like the Erica of Kyle and Dorit. Because Dorit did not bring nearly enough for the last couple years. So with Crystal being out, I'm like, okay. But anyways, um, this week for the live on Saturday, I am going live with Tom Hamlet from Dumpster Dive Pod. We are going to discuss the Drag Race finale. I'm going to get his thoughts on the season. We're going to chat all things Drag Race on Saturday at 10 a.m. for that live. That will be the last Saturday live I do because it's just not growing. It's not getting any bigger. Um, but the Sunday live with Kendrick that I do the weekly recap and the Martha's Vineyard coverage that will stay alive and well. That's a fun, fun live. So please, if you can, 10 a.m. Sundays, Pacific time, obviously, um, that's a good time. That one will stay. But so after this weekend, 10 a.m. with Tom Hamlet, I'm going to be dissolving that. Um, I will still chat here and there, I think, about Teen Mom and Jersey Shore, uh, but also the challenge has come out, the challenge all stars. And so I'm going to keep an eye on that. I have yet to decide exactly how I'm going to cover it um, and when I'm going to cover it, whatever. Uh, but just uh, just to give you that update in terms of for my for my diehards that were there for the Saturday lives, all all 20 of you, um, it's going to be this week and I'll be the last. Um, I think that's it for announcements. Um but okay, thank you guys again for all of your understanding during my week off. I'm back, not going anywhere again for a while. Love ya, mean it. I'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to She's Speaking with Emily Hanks. This show is produced, hosted, and edited by me, Emily, and brought to you in partnership with Cloud10 Media. If you are looking for bonus content, check out the Patreon. The link is in the description. To show some support, you can hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode. Another free way to support the pod, please rate and or review on whatever platform you listen. It's free and it helps the algorithm or something. You could also head to buymeacoffee.com slash she speaks and buy me a coffee or two. Make sure you're following me on all social medias. I am She's Speaking with Emily Hanks across all platforms, threads, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. That's it. Thank you guys. See you soon.